it's Joel. I'm at the Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival at the Cocoa Press booth with Ellie. And look, it is out. Yes, it's out for the first time. I've actually uh, have these things available for pre-order. It's 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 kind of my victory lap here. The pre-order. So you announced it's out. Everybody can put down a hundred bucks if they want to get their hands on one, right? Yes, definitely. So it's a hundred dollars, and then people will be able to pay the remaining uh, thirteen ninety nine when it ships this fall. And this is just so that I can get kind of a count of how many parts do I need to buy, how many machines do I need to do. It's a new product. It's been incredible so far. I love seeing this because I followed your work for quite a number of years and this has taken many shapes. This seems to be the final form. Yes, this is the printer I always wanted right here. I'm so happy with this one. It works well. I can do a 27 minute Benchy in chocolate. It's amazing. 27 minute Benchy in chocolate? Yes, 27 minutes right here. It's pretty incredible. Just the quality and what this machine is able to do. I didn't think that some of this stuff would be possible with chocolate. You've trialed all sorts of chocolates in this thing. So what is what has caused the chocolate to perform the way you want it to? So we actually moved to a compound chocolate, which means the fat base is a palm oil. And uh, it still has cocoa solids in it as well. And that basically allows the chocolate to melt at a higher temperature, or, or more like solidify at a higher temperature. So we're heating it to the lowest possible temperature it will flow. It's more of a gel than actually a liquid. Pushing on it with about 10 pounds of force, and then it solidifies in the ambient temperature like you can see here. Wait, ambient? Is there? I see blowers here. Is it actually? Are, the, are those? There's no fan on there at all. There's no part cooling fan or anything. We have one fan in the back for the electronics, and that's it. So this thing is so quiet. Hold on just a sec. I've seen articulated fish printing on this with overhangs. Benchy, there's no cooling? There's no cooling. This chocolate is an incredible material. You know, when you are working on a new product and when you're innovating, you can do it from the mechanical side, you can do it from the software side. And we said, can we do it from the material science side? And can we actually do it from a food science side? And that's the biggest improvement from our previous printer to this one is actually in the material science itself. That doesn't mean we're locking people out of their own chocolate. People can still use whatever they want. All they have to do is put chocolate in these tubes, try to make them as air bubble free as possible, but we'll also be selling our chocolate cores that will be really easy to use for people who don't want to learn how to make it themselves. So Cocoa Press has an open chocolate platform. Definitely, definitely. The, the mechanical side with the build of the machine and the software you're running. So first, as far as the mechanical goes, this is a Core XY machine, correct? Yep, it's a Core XY machine. We worked with uh, RCF, the founder of the Voron project. So it's all based on kind of a V0.1, but we basically replaced every single part. It turns out there's actually a lot of simplifications that you can make when you're trying to print in, in chocolate. We don't have a heated bed, so we can actually screw right into the bed, and you don't need that entire setup that you need for the V0.1. And then other fun things like we need cleanable surfaces. We, d we don't want chocolate in different crevices and cracks. Food safe. Food safe, of course. And it turns out that actually makes the machine look beautiful. If you say, I need no crevices and cracks so that chocolate doesn't get caught in places, it makes a pretty machine too. The look is really simplistic. It looks minimal, but powerful in what it's doing. The software though that runs this, typically in Voron's side, like I just built a, a Voron machine, it, I'm running Clipper. Are you Clipper here or are you Marlin or something else? We're Marlin based on this, using the uh, Wellsbot Touch UI and it's, it works really well for us. It, it's so that we can have incredibly precise temperature control that Marlin allows us to have. Oh, I guess you would need that because you want the cocoa at that gelation stage, but not a liquid stage. Yeah, we have two different heaters in here and they have, they're have they different by about a 10th of a degree Celsius. So the nozzle is a hair warmer than the rest of it. So that- A 10th of a degree. A 10th of a degree Celsius. I have spent so much time on temperature sensor research and math and everything on this. It's incredible what this thing can do now. I can tell this is the machine you wanted because it looks like this <laughs> This is exactly what it should have been, a simplified version of a known platform with great software that just makes a lot of chocolate look amazing and it tastes good as well. Yeah. And it's all running on Prusa Slicer. It's, it's really cool that there's not custom stuff that's needed for chocolate so that people can still go on printables or you know things or something and download any file they would otherwise have. And that's why I keep surprising myself with print and place gears and articulating fish and all the stuff I never thought would be possible with this machine. You've got this coming out, like you said, shipping in the fall, which means a ton of people are going to be 3D printing chocolate for Christmas. Yes, that is my goal is to have a 3D chocolate printing Christmas.
pastry shops or professional places that actually want to use this for professional purposes have a ready-built, known, solid platform and, and, and software solution to make the chocolate happen. Definitely, definitely. We're going to start off by selling it as a DIY kit so people will print the parts themselves and assemble it. And then next year, after Valentine's Day, we'll, be, uh, we'll have a fully assembled unit as well for those chocolate shops. Well, Ellie, this has been an amazing time, and I want you to look right there and tell everyone at home where they can go to find out more. You can go to CocoPress.com or find us on Twitter at CocoPress or TikTok or any other social media, really. Check it out, and if you're interested, you can uh, place a deposit today. If you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a cause you believe in. Print all the chocolate. And as always, high five. High five. I didn't do it in the end.